My name is Eric Quintanilla, I'm the band director of Roosevelt High School. So before you, we have, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out this evening. What you have in front of you are students from LA Unified School District. We've got students from Roosevelt High School. We've got students from uh, O'Shea Learning uh, Academy. We have students from Hollywood High School, and we have students from our All City Band Group. So you have a, a big mix of students up front here representing all of LA Unified. Uh, we're going to be playing some tunes here for you as a, as a sort of a precursor to what you're going to see tonight. So thank you very much for coming out. Enjoy the music.
I'm an LUSD grad as well, alumni of Hollywood High School, so I'm very proud to be here. Uh, my name is Rick Greentree. Wonderful presentation today. Thank you for coming out. Let's give it up one more time for Eric Quintani and the Roosevelt High School Marching Band. They were so gracious enough to let some of my home band members participate and play with them tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the world-famous Hollywood High School for the last repair shop celebration. An evening celebrating music and Los Angeles. Yes, truly Los Angeles. It is a slice of life of what is going on out there. We are proud to welcome all of you to our school for this special event and occasion. Today, we are joined by LAUSD representatives and the filmmaking team from Breakwater Studios and Ed All Studios, the group responsible for making The Last Repair Shop, which is now nominated for an Academy Award at this year's event. I am sure it is going to be an amazing show. To kick things off, I would now like to welcome to the stage our superintendent, Alberto Carvalho, to the stage to say a few words. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal, and welcome to beautiful Hollywood High School. Um, I know it's been raining. It seems like it's been raining for a long time, but nothing could dampen the spirit that we're feeling here tonight. A spirit that's replicated across Los Angeles in celebration of this remarkable, 
snippet of the reality in our schools that so beautifully paints a picture of possibility, of opportunity that arts and music bring to the fabric of education. I can tell you after speaking, you know, not many times with, with Ben and Chris, it is so palpable that there is a powerful story that is told and retold every time we watch this film. It's a story of people who probably would not be known to anyone even though what they do is felt by everyone. You know, I was looking at these instruments that are still down here. And if there were no kids playing them because they were broken, there would not be any beautiful sound created by our kids. So this story that has touched my heart and is touching the hearts of so many, not only in this city and this state, trust me, across the country, soon across the globe, is a story that needs to be told and retold, never forgotten. The remarkable work that Steve and his team do at the last and best repair shop is unmatched. The work, the vision, the passion that Ben and Chris have revealed is visionary, inspired, and inspirational. And the beneficiaries our students. You know, I think about 100,000 instruments in this school system of ours. Five to 6,000 of them circulating through the hands of the talented professionals at the repair shop. I'm inspired. I'm inspired by what they do. I'm inspired by what you've done. I'm inspired by what our children will show as they can do. I close by simply saying thank you. Thank you for welcoming me here tonight, allowing me to have a small voice on this big platform that elevates the dignity, the humanity, and the possibility of the youth of our community. I also want to thank the community for being here. If you're a teacher, a support staff member, our board members, Nick Melvoin and Dr. Rocio Rivas are here with us tonight. But many other people, community representatives, our faith-based council, the superintendent's business advisory council, philanthropy are here tonight because this is a special moment. This also serves as a celebration of the reinvention of uh, Los Angeles Education Foundation. They will continue to fight for the presence of arts and music in our schools. Why is this important? This is important because without music, there is no life. Without music, without the arts, there is no education. For music is that one communication model that requires no Webster dictionary. You don't have to Google it because it speaks first to your heart before it hits your brain. It is that unifying element, the glue of community and society. And that is exactly the story that Ben and Chris have brought to us. A story lived by remarkable professionals. A story lived by individuals who, when they were students, made good trouble. And today, as city leaders like Monica, they played. And today, they elevate that voice and that demand for the benefit of all students in our community. So Ben and Chris, thank you. Thank you for bringing meaning, full experiences to all of us. To the remarkable repair shop professionals, Steve and your team, thank you for having the courage to tell each one of your individual stories, which is a narrative that by itself is impressive. And the 540,000 students in our district and the music they play on their behalf I say thank you. Now let me uh, bring up the stage someone who needs no introduction but certainly deserves one. I told him when I was coming in because there was music. I said, please don't start dancing. And of course, 
he started dancing. The one and only school board member, Nick Melvoin. Thank you, but do not worry, I will not dance for you on the stage. Uh, the express request of my staff. So, but um, thank you, Superintendent Garbalo. Thank you all for coming on a school night, on a rainy school night. Thank you to the LUSC Foundation. Thank you to the Broad Foundation. Thank you to Ben and Chris and our repair shop colleagues. What you do every day has such an impact on our students and on our city. Thank you, Principal De Vlatian, wherever you are. Um, yeah, round of applause for our Hollywood High School. Here he is. Sam Blasian and the wonderful team from Hollywood for hosting us today. Uh, congrats on having an amazing arts program here at the historic Hollywood High. I want to give a shout out to my colleague, colleague Dr. Rocio Rivas, who's here, uh, and also, of course, Superintendent Carvalho for his leadership and uh, moral clarity when it comes to what our students deserve, our music in addition to all the rest. Thank you to the students in this film who share their stories, including that lovely young lady right here who's sitting in the second row and her friends. And thank you, of course, to the exceptional employees who work tirelessly to serve our students and whose personal journeys reflect the diversity of this great district and city. As school systems have begun to recognize again, after having seemingly forgotten for far too long, that arts and music are a critical part of education, LA Unified, like with so many things, is leading the way. Art and music keep kids learning. Music is fractions and poetry. Scripts are reading and writing. Video production is computer science and engineering. And in Los Angeles particularly, the disciplines of the arts themselves are important to prepare students, not only the, for the careers of tomorrow, but for the careers of today. Perhaps most importantly, Art and music bring engagement, wellness, and joy to students and school communities who, through the arts, express their voices and ideas that may not be as accessible through traditional academic courses. My own father, who was a TV writer, credits his high school drama teacher for not only inspiring his career, but changing his life, and they kept in touch until she passed a few years ago. I'm grateful for this district's ongoing commitment and increased investment in the arts, including a recent purchase that this board made of $30 million worth of additional instruments. $30 million of additional instruments. We need it. Steve, you may have to hire more folks in your repair shop. The arts are a priority at LA Unified, and together with support from our partners, we'll be able to increase the repair shop's capacity and ensure students can have consistent access to the arts throughout their educational career at LA Unified. The last thing I want to say is that I'm also thrilled that Ben and Chris have shared a message, not just about music and the arts, but a message that we can fix broken things, given the state of the world right now. I know that I took inspiration from your movie beyond just a love for music, but for the very idea of putting the pieces back together, and that's such a crucial message for all of us right now. Now it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend, Council Member Monica Rodriguez. She has served on the Los Angeles City Council since July of 2017, has been a real friend and partner of the school district and everything we've needed, uh, has also been a real champion of this film and of our repair shop, including recognizing it with the city of Los Angeles. She also is waging her own uh, guerrilla marketing campaign that I think you might see for this film. So without further ado, Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. Good evening, everyone. It is so wonderful to join you all today in celebrating this remarkable documentary short that really captures the hearts of people just throughout the city. I know it touched me. When I watched it, I cried. Uh, I, yes, that's me. That's, that's when my good trouble started back at San Fernando High School, when I was fighting to protect music in our schools during the 1990s budget cuts, the, the teacher cuts, everything that was happening. Um, and the arts were always first on the chopping block. And the arts are critical for young people to express themselves. They're critical to finding your voice and being able to connect communities. You know, Hollywood High School, Superintendent, I want you to know, and uh, uh, Mr. D, I applied when I was at Pacoima Middle School, I applied to uh, 
try to get to Hollywood High School for the theater arts program because I had dreams of going into musical theater. And when I didn't get in through that magnet program, I ended up at my local treasured high school, San Fernando High School, uh, the school of many distinguished alumni, including our uh, senator, Alex Padilla, where that's where we met. And San Fernando High School ended up becoming the place where I learned my voice would be used for something very different. And it was to be a voice for our community, a voice to advocate and fight for the things that we needed, the arts being among them. And the last time I was here, I was sharing with my chief of staff, the last time I was here at Hollywood High School was in 2013, when I sat out in the cold, waiting to get in to watch Morrissey play here. And I was in the pit, I made it in the pit. And you know, I'm that person. Music is a very important part of my life. And what I was most grateful for was the storytelling, Ben and Chris, featuring these incredible artisans that protect music for our kids at LA Unified, because I was one of those kids, and my sister was one of those kids, and I have countless friends that were one of those kids, that in the absence of the resources that we had available to us at home, we found that opportunity at school. And so I want to thank you for keeping that dream and that opportunity alive for so many, for, for me, so many of my friends, for so many kids throughout the course of history at LA Unified. I want to thank you, Steve, uh, all the folks at the repair shop for doing the beautiful work that you do to care so passionately to protect and keep music alive for our kids at LA Unified because it is life changing. As I shared when I honored, uh, when I, when I honored Ben, Chris, and, and everybody that was involved in this magnificent piece, I shared the story of my immigrant grandfather, who during the Depression learned how to play the violin from an out-of-work music teacher. He was uh, from Mexico, was in Oklahoma, learned and he was working, and he learned how to play the violin. My grandfather ultimately became a professional mariachi, playing with Los Camperos de Naticano. And that's when he came to the United States. That is how he earned a living. And that is an immigrant story. That story isn't unique. It's very special to how so many people find their way and find their ways of expressing themselves. And that's what the arts and that's what music is all about. It's about bridging the divides in our community. It's about bringing everyone together, finding their way of expressing themselves. And it's incredibly important that we continue to protect that for young people, because it is the one cultural aspect that is not divisive. It brings everyone together. And there is no more greater moment in time that we need to help heal and bring people together and do so through music. So my thanks to everyone involved with this film for shining a light on the incredible unsung heroes that do this work each and every day to keep music alive. And of course, to the incredible students that pick up those instruments and put themselves to the test each and every day to be better, to be stronger, and to show the community what beautiful music we can all make together. Congratulations, and I look forward to us bringing home that Oscar. Wow, Ms. Martinez, I don't know who the principal was back then, but if you're willing to come back as a senior, I'm willing to enroll you. So you can, you can join the band anytime. Thank you, Councilwoman Rodriguez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the film and the co-directors of The Last Repair Shop, Mr. Ben Proudfoot and Kip Bowers to the stage, please. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty good. Well, thank you for all those wonderful, kind words, and thank you all for coming out in the rain. These are the real ones, right here, for this special evening. Chris and I have a, a few words to say. We're going to say them after the film. Uh, big special announcement that we'll make, but I just, for my part, just want to thank you all for being here. It's amazing to be here with. Chris, my, my brother, um, 
I'm from Canada, it's very special. I've lived here for 15 years, but it's moments like this that make me feel like I'm live, that my home is here in LA. So thank you, this is an amazing city. And uh, we'll, we'll be back with some more words in a bit. Yeah, definitely. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, you know, this means a lot to, to Ben and I, and I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Good evening again! Uh, hard, hard not to, even, I've seen it a hundred times and I shed a tear. Uh, well, I, I'm sure you probably felt the same. I, I want to start by giving you all an opportunity to return the favor. They made you cry, and now it's time for you to make them cry. Give it up for the four repair people right here. Patty, Steve, Dana, and Dwayne. Hope you've been feeling in love. And you're, you're not going to be able to, uh, to see them if they don't come forward. But Porsche, Amanda, Ismarai, come up here. Come up, stay right here. Look at her. Here, give it up for her. Porsche Brinker, everybody. Cla Claudinio, are you here? Can I embarrass you? I know Manny's not here, but can, can you come up here? Yes, Cla come on up. Man Manuel. He's not here, but his brother Claudinio is here, plays trumpet, right? Saxophone, so he'll come up too. All right, please, please be seated. Sorry, sorry to broke you into this. See your brother's fault. Um, thank you. Uh, to Superintendent Carvalho, who's been such an exceptional champion of the students of LUSD, of the staff, teachers, and, and of this film because of his championship of you. Uh, thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. You were what inspired us shaking those signs out there. We said, we gotta do like her. <laughs> Mr. Melvoin, Principal D, honored guest. That amazing marching band led by Tony White, Vince Womack, and Mr. Quintanilla. You'll hear, you'll hear more, more from them soon. And I want to thank everybody who was responsible for putting on this evening's event, which is pretty good so far, you gotta, I gotta say. We didn't have much to do with it. Uh, you know who you are, but I especially want to thank uh, my Chief of Staff, Nan Ajua from Paul. Yes, those who know, know. And our dear friend, Jake Block, who were both amazing supporters of this. I also want to give a special shout out to a man by the name of Nick Wright, who edited the film, who's here with a camera somewhere. Where are you, Nick? Where are you? Where are you? Right over there somewhere? He's been four years editing this film. There he is at the back. Come on, give him a round of applause. He's been four years. Like 15% like of his life editing this film. We love you, Nick. Thank you. Yes. So we have a very special announcement. And uh, Chris and I will share the microphone for a few minutes if you'll allow us to bend your ear before a little music and uh, dinner at the end, a surprise at the end, dinner. Yeah, thank you all. Um, we're so excited to be here at this world famous high school. I, uh, I grew up driving by this school almost every single day and I remember looking at that mural and 
as I got older, starting to recognize those faces and realize what this school represents. You know, how this school is really a symbol for this uh, art form that's native to LA, the motion picture, right? And so, uh, for me, it's, it's always been amazing to, um, to think about what this school represents and to be here with you all tonight. It's, it's really special. Uh, tonight we celebrate the individuals who make up the public school uh, system, the music programs, think about the students, uh, the amazing teachers, uh, the repair people, the staff, and everyone who makes it happen 365 days a year. Uh, the magic that happens is because of them in this room. Like, like I said earlier, I'm not from LA, I'm from Nova Scotia in Canada. I like to tell everybody about that. Um, but like so many millions of people, I moved here because I wanted to be part of the movie business that LA invented and remains the capital of. I moved here 15 years ago and it is home now. Now you may know my friend and co-director of the Lost Repair Shop and your fellow LAUSD alum. Uh, is not only one of the greatest living jazz pianists, and you'll get to witness that uh, momentarily, but he doesn't just play, he's also a prolific and amazing composer. Uh, he wrote the score for Disney's Haunted Mansion, Ava DuVernay's Origin, he was shortlisted for an Academy Award for The Color Purple. I'm not done. He's also scored, the, I, I, he, I love to embarrass him, the number one movie in America right now, One Love, the Bob Marley movie, he scored it. Okay? And that's just in the last 12 months. I'm not even going back further than that. So Chris is the exemplar. You know, when Dwayne dreams in the film of who knows, maybe you're fixing an instrument of a future Grammy winner. He's talking about people like Chris. Special people. Yes. But we can't all be Chris. I wish. I took piano lessons. I loved it. But you don't see me winning the Thelonious Monk Award and playing on Good Morning America, and most of us will have that other experience with music. Most of us will start a musical instrument as a kid, really enjoy it, play for others, and at some point, we might set it aside, and we will not become professional musicians. But did we fail? Is learning how to play an instrument, playing it for a few years in your youth, playing at events like this, and for your family, and for your friends, is that a failure if you don't become a professional musician? It's not a rhetorical question. What's the answer? No. No, of course not. Um, and, you know, as much as we love to admire those who can show us, you know, what's possible beyond the horizons of music, uh, music education is far more, uh, about far more than that. It's about much more than educating just those who can play the best. And, um, and that's what we're here tonight to celebrate. There are amazing foundations uh, in the city and around the country that, you know, have the programs that support the young virtuosos, those young students that already have the Stradivarius violin, uh, those that are already destined for Philharmonic success, and th that's important to celebrate, you know. I believe in being the best, and that's great, and we should all strive to be the best, but what's better than being the best as individuals is being the best together, and that's what we do here in the city. And coming up in this building is sadly one of the last in the country. It's by far the biggest uh, of its kind. And we can be incredibly proud as Angelinos that we still believe in the importance of free and freely prepared instruments and that has survived here in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I really think what makes this the creative capital of the world in so many ways. And I love this program because it's built on the principle that playing instrumental music is so important and essential uh, to just being a human being in this world. You know, and we've decided that access to music instruments cannot depend on your income. And as Steve says in the film, one of my favorite lines, no, 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 not in our city. <laughs> but we can't take the repair shop for granted. Unfortunately, as you can see all across the country, the winds of change are not in our favor. Most of that has been privatized. The repair shop has dwindled from a teaming shop of dozens a few decades ago, and now to just 12 people work there. And so we can't take this shop for granted, and we won't. 
So I'd like to invite onto the stage to just join me here as we make a special announcement. Superintendent Carvalho, our repair people, we have our students, anyone else from the Los Angeles Unified School District's Education Foundation to join me. Yes, give a round of applause. Get on up on the stage. Give me some love, Steve, Patty. There they are. Come on up. Come on up on each side. When we first started sharing this film with audiences, we had the good fortune uh, of meeting and aligning with several allies who believed in our fight for music education in Los Angeles. These are some of the people that never wavered in their commitment. Together, we understood that the fundamental goodness and health of our city rests in our ability to advocate and support our kids, and this is why. The repair shop needs our attention, and that's why we made this film. The repair shop needs our love, that's why we made this film. It needs our energy and our advocacy, that's why we made this film. And it also needs our financial support as a city. And that is why it is with great pleasure, uh, in partnership with the LAUSD Education Foundation, the Eli and Edith Broad Foundation, Searchlight Pictures, LA Times Studios, Breakwater Studios, et al. Studios, we announced today February 20th, 2024, we are launching a $15 million capital campaign, the Last Repair Shop Fund to support the Last Repair Shop. $15 million. That means instruments, it means parts, it means people, it means apprenticeships, it means training for any student that wants a job in this repair shop, learn how to repair instruments. You know, Patty and Steve and Dana and Dwayne can't do this forever. Actually, Dana's already retired, so that's, that job is already up for grabs. Um, they can't do this forever, and, and we really want to keep supporting this repair shop. This is, yeah, you can applaud again, yes. This is $15 million. It's our city saying to every child who wants to play music, we're going to be there for you. If you want to be there, if you want to play, you don't have to worry. Because if we want to talk about mental health in schools, let's talk about saxophones. If you want to talk about loneliness and isolation post-pandemic, let's talk about band rooms. You want to talk, yes, you want to talk about a feeling of despair, that the future is going to be worse than the past. Let's talk about putting a cello that's been smashed the smithereens back together again and hearing box cello sweet emanating from it. This is about music shaping better citizens. I know music has made me a better citizen. And you, you, you just thought we were here because we wanted to win an Oscar. <laughs> sure, we do. But there are more important things at stake, and I mean that. Shiny gold things that are much more valuable than an Academy Award. I'm talking about a sousaphone. And a trombone, I'm talking about a trumpet or a flute, or a bass guitar. And in so many ways, what happens uh, March 10th at the Oscars, uh, just down the street, as wonderful as all that is, it really pales in comparison to this, and to, you know, to what we're doing here tonight in this room. Next, or in two weeks, 10 million people from all around the world are going to tune in to the Oscars and watch what's happening down the block. But what we're starting here in this room now will be the thing that actually makes the most impact. The Oscars will come and go, but the power of music to transform lives, both the people playing and the people listening, that, that will last forever. And sometimes brass might be better than gold. So to these amazing students sitting where or standing where I once stood not that long ago, there might be days where you know you think about the difficult things you're moving through. But looking at the stories that you heard tonight, you can know that these repair people aren't just caring for the instruments, they care about you. They do this because they believe in you, even if they've never met you. There are tens of thousands of LAUSD staff members that believe in the same thing. So as you go about your day, at times it may feel like nobody in the world is thinking about you or cheering you on, 
or you know, whatever else we might be going through, there are literally tens of thousands of people who devoted their lives with the hope and belief that you will succeed, that you will achieve your dreams, that you will make it and flourish. And you may not ever meet them like you were able to meet these amazing individuals, but just know that their love is there, and if you're quiet enough, you can hear the music. Well, we're almost done. We're going to hear some music soon. You know, I think sometimes we forget all cooped up in our little cars with our little AirPods on, driving around to go to our little Zoom calls that we're part of one big city, the City of Angels. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more special. I've witnessed nothing more special in my life than when, when, then when this city comes together on nights like this in a common cause and purpose, and that's what I see here today. So as we embark on this journey to raise the $15 million, we call on you, on all of you, not necessarily to donate, but to advocate for this important undertaking and cause. Yeah, you can go to thelastrepairshop.com right now and donate. Uh, if you can't donate, we call on you to reach out to others who can. Uh, we call on those who have been blessed by success in the city and beyond. And uh, we call on you to give the gift of music to this next generation of kids here in Los Angeles. Because Ben and I, if we've learned anything in making this movie, it's that a little music goes a long way. So to celebrate, this, that speech was entirely unrehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate, we're going to enjoy a few musical performances uh, from an incredible group of students. So please, give it up for that! Give it up for them. It's not amazing. Yes, indeed. Um, that reminds me, I used to play that song so much when I was in uh, middle school and high school. Uh, I'm going to play just a quick little thing for you all. Um, this is a piece of music I wrote uh, shortly after leaving LA, and uh, this is called Hope. Thank you. 
This time I have to introduce the program. And um, before uh, before we play our last piece, Mr. Womack and Mr. Tony White, can you guys please come up? These two individuals now do so much incredible work. And Mr. Kitty, please as well. These three individuals not only doing such incredible work uh, in this city, but Vince and Tony, what you all did for this film. When I wanted to find, uh, Ben and I wanted to find students for this film, the first person I called was Tony White to figure out how we could find amazing students. He's the one that led us to the likes of Eastman I and Amanda and Porsche and Manuel. So thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, Vince. You guys can all come up to the stage very briefly. I want to give you all something. Give a round of applause. Tony White. Vince, the end of the movie. So, yeah. Do you, do you know these guys? Huh? No? You know, there, there are uh, so many people that devote so much of their time and love and life uh, to exactly what this film is all about. You know, we've, we've spent a couple years working on this project, you guys have devoted a career, a lifetime, and, and we just wanted to recognize that here tonight. When we recorded the end credits of uh, the movie, we got five copies of the conductor's uh, top sheet here, signed by all the musicians, and we want to give one of them to each of you tonight. So here you go. Nice job. Give a big round of applause. That is the ink, the ink of generations, the ink of generations of LAUSD students who are all on that one page, the alumni. That's, that's what you have created. And you might have seen a few extra members of the orchestra join here. These are past uh, LAUSD alumni who you might recognize who are in the audience today. These are some of the greatest musicians in the world. So uh, I'll pass it back to Chris for the final, uh, the final, the finale, the grand finale.
Yeah, definitely. Thank you all. Um, and before we get to that piece, um, I just wanted to also acknowledge uh, uh, the school that was very important to me. So I went to Third Street Elementary School, and uh, yes, yeah, it's a great school. Um, and that place was where my love for this instrument really uh, flourished, right? I started playing piano when I was four, but it was really in those years that I started to realize that it, it was a medium of, of expression, a vehicle for me to work out these, these emotions and these feelings. Um, and I spent so much of my time in the auditorium playing the piano that was there. Uh, of the 6,000 pianos in the school district, that piano is also the piano that uh, Steve Bagmania worked on, which is amazing for us to have this full circle moment with this film. Um, that's also the same auditorium where I remember, I remember an orchestra coming and talking about film score music. I never even considered that before. And I remember them explaining the different sections of the orchestra by utilizing John Williams' music and having the basses play Jaws and you know learning the instruments that way or such a way into the orchestra that I really have always cherished and appreciated. And so as a, uh, the first gift as a part of this capital campaign, this piano, this 1913 Steinway and Sons, painted with the logo that's inspired by the letter you see on every school uh, van and bus. We're going to give this to Third Street School, and we have an individual here. Thank you for step up. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for everything. We appreciate that. Yes, yeah, Mr. Thank you so much, Mr. Um, now we're going to play our final piece, Mr. Womack. Come on up. We're going to play uh, a marching band version of the alumni. Hope you all enjoy. <laughs>
Bravo, Bocciano.